I'd like to look at rearranging equations in this video. Um, and it, it's very similar to solving equations, except for, I don't know, maybe even makes things simpler, but you probably hate it. Uh, th there's often no numbers, it's just letters. But it's all the same rules that you would use if you were solving an equation. So they sometimes say rearrange an equation for a particular variable, but they might also say change the subject of the equation. Um, so in these examples, I could say, uh, rearrange this equation to make x the subject, or they might say, um, you know, rearrange to make the variable in the brackets the subject of the equation, so that means x. And to make the subject, that literally means I want this to say something like x equals blah 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 blah. So I need to get x equals on one side. So whatever you're trying to make the subject of, or rearrange for, you're trying to get that alone by itself, just as if you were solving for x. So as an example, let's just look at this one first. We have 11 is equal to 3x plus 4. So if I told you to just solve for x, you'd probably be alright with this. You would say, okay, well that's 3x plus 4, so I'm going to minus 4, minus 4 from both sides. That's going to give me 9 is equal to 3x. That's 3 divided, sorry, 3 times x. So I'm going to divide by 3, divide by 3. 3 is equal to x. No problem. We added terms that were on, um, or we subtracted and added terms that we could, and we divided when we could as well. We came up with our answer. So looking at this problem, almost the exact same equation, but now instead of a number 11, I'm going to give you a variable y. But same idea, solve for x. We want to get x by itself. I notice that it's got a 3 attached to it and a plus 4. So I'll pick off the easy thing first. Let's do minus 4 to both sides. Now because y and 4 are not like terms, I cannot combine them to be 9 or some other number like I did in the first example, so I'm just going to say that that needs to be y minus 4 is now equal to 3x. Next step to get x by itself, that's 3 times x, so I need to divide by 3. And then I'm just going to divide by everything over there by 3 as well. Those simplify, and I can leave this as y minus 4 divided by 3 is equal to x. And that becomes my final answer. You don't need to simplify any further than that. Looking at another example, here I'm looking to make c the subject of my equation, so I'm looking to see where that is. It's down here on the bottom right now. So to solve for an equation to make it the subject, it needs to not only be by itself, have a coefficient 1, but it also needs to be in the numerator. It needs to be on top of the fraction, if it is in a fraction. And here we can see that it's not by itself and it's on the bottom. So for me, in my head, with some experience, I know that I need to get that c to the top first. So since it's on the bottom of the equation, um, in terms of fractions, I know I need to deal with that very first step. So, to get rid of a c on the bottom, and get it onto the top instead, if I times this side by c, and times everything over here by c, doing the same thing to both sides of the equation, those will cancel, I'm left with a, b is equal to and I could expand that through to say cm plus cx, but I know just a little bit of experience, I'm going to leave it in brackets. c times everything on that side of the equation. And now I want to try and get c by itself, now that I've got it to the top of the expression here. So c times the bracket mx, or m plus x. Let's just think about treating this as one solid thing. Well, since it's in brackets, we can. That c times all that stuff, so if I just divided by all that stuff on both sides, it will cancel over here, and I'm left with ab over m plus x is equal to c. Now you can leave that in brackets on the bottom if you want, or you can leave them off, it doesn't really matter. So again, if the variable you're looking to make the subject is on the bottom of a fraction, you need to make sure you times it to both sides to get it on top first and then think about possibly um, having to leave things in brackets. And just as a side note there, like had I expanded that out, I would have had cm plus cx. To get c by itself here, I need to combine them together, and that means to me that I'd kind of have to factor that out anyways. I'd have to put the c there and do the m plus x anyways. So I would have gotten right back to that step there. So if you're trying to time c by lots of stuff and you're making that the subject, just leave the other stuff in the brackets, makes it easier. And for this example, the volume of a cylinder, so v is equal to pi times r squared h. Here I want to make r my subject. Okay, so 
I know here that I've got volume and those are little invisible time signs between all that stuff. So we can do it in one step at a time. We could divide by pi on both sides. And then we could divide by h on both sides. But I know we can also think about this idea that pi h r squared is the same thing as what I've got there. So think about all that stuff being together. I might just divide by pi and h at the same time. And again, you can do that in separate steps if you wanted to do. You could divide by pi on both sides first, and then divide by h on both sides. But here, since they're all being times together, I'm just going to do them both at once. h's will cancel, the pi's will cancel, and I get v is equal to pi h r squared. And don't freak out. I guess I should say that for this example we just did as well. It doesn't matter whether the thing you're trying to get by itself is on the left or right. Having that is on the right-hand side of the equation is fine. You don't have to get the x onto the left-hand side or whatever you're solving for on the left-hand side every time. But here I'm not done yet. I've got v divided by pi h, and that's equal to r squared. That's not r by itself. That is r squared. So how do you undo a square root? Or <laughs> giving you the answer. How do you undo a square, you might ask? We need to take the square root of both sides. So a square root and a square will cancel each other. We've got the square root of v over pi h, all together under that square root, is equal to r. And, I don't know, a tiny little thing for us that you might uh, know or not know, oops, lost myself, that you n might not know, um, is that if I want to do, like, x squared is equal to 16, to solve for x, I'll do the square root of both sides, and that gets me x is equal to 4 or negative 4. There's two answers for an even root, because I know that 4 times 4 gets me 16, but negative 4 times negative 4 also gets me 16. So in this case, because I've done a square root, I could do a plus or minus, but because I'm dealing with a real-life situation, with this being a radius and the volume of a cylinder, I'm going to say that r is equal to the positive solution, because it can't be negative, because a radius is not negative. But if that wasn't necessarily a real life situation and just some abstract equation, you might just, you, well, you would want to put the positive and the negative, that there are two solutions for that square root. Okay, last example. This one's come up in exams a few times. It's quite tricky. Um, doesn't look so bad at the start. You see you've got 1 over x plus 1 over y is equal to 1 over z, and in this case, I want to see y as the expression by itself. And that means that I need to get y is on top by itself is equal to a bunch of other stuff. So for me, when I approach this problem, I'm noticing that y is currently not by itself, nor is it on top. But because I have this term here, I might try to get it by itself first. That might be my first step here. So I'll try to get whatever term has the y in it by itself first, and then I'll think about trying to get it off of the bottom. So that is a plus 1 over x. So if I minus 1 over x from both sides, just moving that whole thing along, I'm going to get 1 over y is equal to 1 over z minus 1 over x. Okay, now I need to get y on top of this equation. Now some of you might think, oh, just flip it upside down. Not going to work. Absolutely not going to work. I need to think about taking y and timesing it to the other side. So, um... I'll actually show you guys two solutions from here. One of them is less pretty, but it's still correct, and I'll show you the second one, which is probably the prettier and nicer and better way to do it. Um, if I have y on the bottom here, if I times everything by y on both sides, oops, times by y to everything, I can get 1, because the y's cancel, is equal to 1 over z minus 1 over x times y because that's all that junk in the brackets times by y, I can, in my next step, just divide by all that junk to get it by itself. So dividing there, and dividing over here, 1 over z minus 1 over x. So I could get here 1 over 1 over z minus 1 over x, and brackets on the bottom of that fraction is equal to y. And that will work. But just as an aside, in case you need this, um, looking at the bottom of that, so starting here, 1 over 1 minus z, 1 minus x, we might want to actually put that together into um, a 
a single fraction instead of two different things here because we can tidy this up. So if I am going to combine these together, I need to make a common denominator. So I need to times the top and the bottom by x, and the top and the bottom by z. So I've got x over zx minus um, z over zx. Combining these together, I've got x minus z over zx, or I guess writing it in alphabetical order, xz. So that's what the bottom of the fraction simplified to. So going back to this idea that I have a fraction, 1 over x minus z over xz is equal to y. So again, I simplified this part of the fraction, got this out of it, and we're just going right back to having that under 1. Okay. Now, to make this a little bit prettier, keep in mind if I gave you something like this, 1 over 2 divided by... Um, maybe we'll do it this way. Let's do this. 3 divided by 1 over 2. Well, if I'm dividing things, I can think about making them both fractions. Makes it easy. That's 3 over 1 divided by 1 half. 3 over 1 times, flip the second fraction, and you're going to get 6. So we're flipping the second fraction and timesing. Remember that a big fraction bar is the exact same thing as divide. So I basically said 1 divided by um, x minus z over xz is equal to y. So let's change that first bit to a fraction, 1 over 1. We're going to times and we're going to flip the second part of the fraction upside down, xz over x minus z is equal to y. So 1 times in straight across, we just get xz. On the bottom again, times in straight across, we just get x minus z is equal to y. So that's the prettier way to write the answer than what we had before. They mean the same thing, they're both correct. Maybe it's not prettier to you, but um, it can be helpful if you're actually going on to solve other stuff as well. So feel free to stop here. That would be legal and totally legit. But just so you see that little trick with fractions in terms of dividing them and making common denominators, that can be helpful at times too.